Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, Ambassador Chairman and Van der Priam, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to welcome you as Chairman of the Board of the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency. To this virtual briefing of the economic mission, which Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid will preside over in the UK from May 9th to May 12th. This mission is very special as it is the first post-Brexit and the first post-COVID-19 mission. For more than two years, we have been unable to concretize our mission. Now it's time to catch up. The mission has clearly been identified as a priority by the federal and the regional authorities, but also by the different federations in our country. It is therefore no surprise that it has regenerated considerable success with no less than 406 participants. The mission will be visiting London and Oxford and the official program is extremely dense with many high level activities, as you will hear in a moment from the different speakers today. Our bilateral trade relations are of course, extremely important. In 2021 was Belgium, the seventh largest client of goods from the United Kingdom worldwide. The same year, Belgium was the sixth largest supplier of goods to the United Kingdom. What explains Belgium's quite prominent place as a trade partner of the United Kingdom? Proximity between our two countries might play a part, but another factor is that even though Belgium is a relatively small country, it ranks high as a foreign trade is concerned. It was the 10th largest exporter and the 13th largest importer of goods worldwide in 2021. However, Belgium exports of goods to the United Kingdom were down for the fifth year in a row in 2021. They amounted to a little over 26.2 billion euro, which is 7.1% less than the previous year. By contrast, Belgian imports from the United Kingdom increased by 9.8% from 14.1 billion euro to over 15.5 billion euro. Belgium trade balance for four goods with the United Kingdom traditionally displays a surplus in favor of our country. In 2021, it amounted to a little more than 10.7 billion euro. Considering this trend, the mission has an important role to play to revive Belgian export to the UK. I have no doubt that Her Royal Highness will offer an outstanding support to our companies on this occasion. I will now give the floor to her. Your Royal Highness, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to open this virtual briefing. I don't think it will be our last one. I'm also incredibly happy that we can resume our economic missions after such a long time, we are all eager to start again our work in 19 days time. The prospect of working together with new teams, with fresh energy, and for the first time with our new Belgian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Madame Sophie Wilmes, gives me great joy. I would like to thank her, as I would like to thank all those who have been preparing this important mission to the United Kingdom. 
I thank the Embassy of Belgium in London and the British Ambassador in Brussels, the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency, all federal and regional authorities, as well as all participating federations and business representatives. Some weeks ago, it was a pleasure to visit the port of Zeebrugge. I truly admire the capacity of our business leaders to be flexible, to be creative, and to find innovative solutions to the logistical and administrative challenges in the trade relationship with the UK. It was also impressive to learn more about the merger with the port of Antwerp and to understand even better the critical importance and economic width of all our Belgian ports in their relationship with economic partners around the world. During visits to other companies and meetings with high officials, I have listened to many useful thoughts and observations. All this should make us confident that notwithstanding current uncertainties for our economies and for the world, we can identify more business and investment opportunities with this important market across the North Sea. Having children living there, you also might know my personal attachment to the United Kingdom and its royal family. Trying to help this economic mission becoming beneficial for the future economic relationship of our country with the host country will therefore be an even greater honor and pleasure. The program looks promising and I'm ready for it. I noted that your day, May 9th, falls during our week. Even if it was not the intention, the coincidence is highly symbolic and we should not shy away from our great blessings to be a founding member of the European Union while fully respecting the choice of others. Regarding the possible outcomes of this important mission, we will see, but there will be no greater pleasure that I would experience if you can come back with the highest level of satisfaction. I also hope that a follow-up can be organized. The Belgo British markets are too important and deserve our joint attention and investment. I conclude by saying that I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person at the departure with the Eurostar or directly in London or Oxford. I cannot wait to successfully continue our collective work on economic missions. Thank you again, and please remain assured of my full commitment and support to your work, to our work. I thank you, your Royal Highness, for this inspired intervention. I have no doubt that you have even further motivated our participants in view of this important mission to the United Kingdom. I will now ask Mrs. Fabian Lust, Director General of the Agency, of the Belgian Agency for Foreign Trade, to briefly present the outlines of this very important mission. Mrs. Lost, I give you the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, Chairman and Ambassador van der Plum, ladies and gentlemen. Since 2021, the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency has been actively preparing this Belgian economic mission in close cooperation with its regional partners, Flanders Investment and Trade, AUEX and Hub Brussels, as well as the Federal Public Service Foreign Affairs that oversees the political and protocol aspects of the program. This is actually the longest ever preparation of, of the mission 
since it was postponed twice. I believe I can say on behalf of our respective teams that we are eager to renew with the trade missions and offer our dedicated support to Belgian companies. Now, a, a few words about the mission itself. Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid of Belgium will, of course, be presiding over the mission. The federal government will be represented, as just mentioned by Her Royal Highness, by Her Excellency Sophie Wilbes, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, European Affairs and Foreign Trade. At the regional level, we will welcome His Excellency Jan Jambon, Minister President of the Government of Flanders, His Excellency Willy Borsu, Vice President of the Walloon Government, and His Excellency Pascal Smet, State Secretary of the Brussels Capital Region in charge of foreign trade. I will also mention the presence for some select activities of the mission of Her Excellency Tine van der Straten, Federal Minister of Energy, as well as Her Excellency Hilde Krivitz, Vice Minister President of the Government of Flanders. As you've just heard, the mission is a great success and counts no less than 406 participants, including 163 registered companies represented by 260 businessmen, as well as federations, chambers of commerce, higher education institutions, and as you can see, also some journalists. Although this is a multi-sectoral mission, several key sectors have been identified by the three regions, as you can see uh, on the current slide. And you will have more details from the regions uh, about the sectors in a moment. Let me now give you some important practical information in view of the mission. The Belgian delegation, or most of them, will be traveling to London by Eurostar. A dedicated train has been reserved to this purpose. You have here the details of um, the schedule for the uh, first the train going to London on May 8th, and then the train back from London on Thursday, May 12th. Uh, you will be able to, uh, to have a look at the PowerPoint presentation that you'll release uh, later on or on the, at the recording of this um, briefing. But important is to mention that uh, for the check-in of the delegation, you will have to be there well ahead of time from 1 to 1.45 p.m. at the latest, because we are waiting for about 200 participants. And of course, it will take time uh, for everybody to register. And our BFTA team will be there at the terminal to give you your badge of the mission, your luggage tags and uh, stickers as well. So also important to mention that you are expected to wear a mask at the station and on board the Eurostar. So this is all for the Eurostar as regards the travel documentation. Um, no visa is required, as you can see, but you will now require a valid passport to travel to U the UK. Uh, all COVID restrictions have been lifted, which is very good news for all of us. And uh, PLF is no longer necessary to travel to the UK at the moment. Uh, it is still uh, fill, it still has to be filled in to come back to Belgium. Also important, uh, you are requested to, to wear your personal badge of the mission uh, in a visible way during all the activities of the mission. So this badge will be handed over uh, to those of you who will travel by Eurostar at uh, Brussels South Station. Uh, for those who were not on that train, you can receive them at the information session that will be organized on the first evening, or if you're not able to join that, at the Secretariat of the Mission uh, Room Covent Garden on the mezzanine floor of the hotel. And uh, now we will have a look, a brief look at the program of the mission. I will only focus on a few of the, of the activities and our colleagues of the regions will uh, give you more details on their respective activities. As I mentioned, the first um, event is the information session uh, that will be organized for the whole delegation um, and where you will receive individual programs and this uh, information session will be followed by a networking drink. 
Then the first official day of the mission, Monday, May 9th, uh, starts. Um, as you can see, you have two columns for those of you who are not familiar yes, yet with the missions. The left uh, column being for Her Royal Highness and the ministers, and the right column for the business delegation. So first activity, success stories, breakfast organized by the Federation's, uh, Federation of Enterprises in Belgium. And then you see uh, for the business delegation, some B2B meetings, which will take place all over the mission. Also on the first day, several high, high level official meetings are due to take place, or at least we hope so. We expect to have some confirmation on that um, as soon as possible. Um, I mentioned also the best of Belgian sports technology uh, organized uh, by Agoria, uh, taking place from 11.20 that day. In the after, uh, first, you will have after that an investment power luncheon that will be followed by um, the presence of a Belgian garden created by the Flemish Agriculture Marketing Board and uh, landscape architect Peter Wichts. Later that afternoon, uh, there will be an event um, on the... Uh, can you come back on the previous slide, please? Yes, British Belgian trade in food and beverages. Her Royal Highness will then together with the ministers uh, visit the Van Gogh exhibition where uh, they will be enjoying, uh, enjoying an immersive experience. And finally, we end the day by the prestigious Belgian official reception uh, organized in the beautiful premises of Guildhall and this reception uh, will attract uh, no less than 800 guests. And I take um, advantage of this opportunity to warmly thank all the sponsors of this reception of which you find the logo on the current slide. On Tuesday, uh, we will start the day with an event uh, towards Net Positive City, how Brussels and London can help each other to accelerate the path to net positive um, um, companies and cities by boosting the sharing of innovation and government. Yes. Um, then we'll have an event organized by the Federal Public of Foreign Affairs, 10 years of the UN, UN guiding principles on business and human rights with as a, a specific topic sharing challenges and best practices in implementation. This event will be followed uh, by a EU UK trade co cooperation agreement activity uh, focusing on practi practical aspects. Um, next we will have uh, the, the event uh, organized by the North Sea Port and a luncheon organized by the Federation of Enterprises of Belgium, the classical a B2G luncheon organized in cooperation with the Confederation of the British Industry. You will see then, uh, can we come back to the previous slide, please? Yes, um, uh, logistics activity organized by the Port of Antwerp Bruges. The next day is the day that is devoted to uh, the Oxford program. Uh, on the way to Oxford, we um, make a stop to uh, attend the inauguration of the new UCB site in Windelsen. Then we arrive in Oxford where the day will start with a courtesy call with Professor Louise Richardson, Vice Chancellor of the University of Oxford. We will then have a high-level high healthy lunch uh, organized by Essentia together with the three regions, um, showcasing Belgium as the health and biotech valley of tomorrow. After leaving Oxford, we will stop at the Column Center for Fusion Energy for an activity organized by Agoria. And we then come back to the hotel for the classical uh, signing ceremony at the moment, 12 agreements are scheduled to be signed. 
This ceremony will be uh, followed by the informal press moment with the Belgian press. And the uh, final official activity on the program on Thursday, May 12th, uh, is the inauguration or start of the construction of the integrated waste management facility uh, and energy center of Indaver in Rivenhall. As you know, I suppose most of you know, uh, the hotel that has been selected for the mis mission is the Intercontinental uh, London Parkling Hotel. Uh, and you see here the check-in and check-out signs. Important information as well, and just uh, fresh of the press today, uh, our dedicated website of the mission uh, goes live. And this website also includes a, a mobile application version. On this uh, website and application, you can find the latest uh, version of the program of the mission, background information on the different activities, CVs of the VIPs, um, pictures of the activities day by day, and so on. Here you have a picture of um, the mobile application, and we take advantage of the opportunity to thank our uh, partner, Belfius, who is uh, kindly offering support to finance uh, this project. Now, I would also like to introduce, for those of you who don't know um, our team yet, uh, Rose Dunk, our director, head of department, state visits and Belgian economic missions, who is the main uh, project manager of this mission. Um, Daphne Hidalgo who is the coordina uh, coordinator um, and who will be supporting Rose, as well as Pascaline the Planter, the Splinter, sorry, also coordinator. Uh, Astrid, who is our press officer for the mission, and um, Perrine Dockier, uh, who is our assistant and will be present at the secretariat during the whole uh, duration of the mission to offer support to you. Before um, ending the speech, a brief overview of the missions that are planned for this year. After the mission in the UK, we will have uh, a mission to the United States. Uh, taking place in June, and um, already we have closed registrations for this mission. Uh, we will soon, on the other hand, start registrations for the mission to Japan due to take place in December. And also on the agenda for next year are Senegal and Australia. That's it uh, from my part, and uh, I would like to end by wishing you a very successful mission. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Loos. You were perfectly on time. I hope that the Eurostar will be as you on time in St. Pancras on the 9th of May. Now, I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Dirk van Stertegem. Mr. Dirk van Stertegem is Director of Trade at Flanders Investment and Trade. So, Mr. van Stertegem, the floor is yours. So, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mar Malherbe. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear entrepreneurs. In my turn, I warmly welcome you all to this briefing meeting for the Belgian Economic Mission to the United Kingdom in a few weeks time. The Belgian economic mission to the UK comes with a large delegation of 97 Flemish companies, federations and institutions. This number includes 13 Flemish companies participating in UK for Explorers, an additional guidance program organized by FIT together with UNISO, especially for companies that are relatively new to the British market. The large number of participants should not come as a surprise. Few export markets are as broadly discussed as the UK. Moreover, Flanders and the UK have a rich history of thriving international trade. Although there are a lot of additional customs formalities to be fulfilled since the UK and the EU signed the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, the British market still offers plenty of opportunities for Flemish companies. After all, the innovation domains that are high on the agenda in the UK 
such as health appliances and digital technologies are tailor-made for Flemish technology companies. But there is also room for growth for Flanders classic powerhouses. Think of the food industry. As the third largest market in Europe, the British retail sector offers a lot of potential for our food industry. And when it comes to international trade, Flanders and the UK are already anchored trading partners. In 2021, Flemish annual exports to the UK amounted to almost 24 billion euro, which represents a 2.59% decrease year on year. The United Kingdom accounted for 6.25% of the total value of annual exports from Flanders and thus ranked at position number four among Flemish export partner countries. We mainly export chemical and pharmaceutical products and food and beverages. Conversely, Flanders purchases mineral products, chemical and pharmaceutical products, and transport equipment from the UK. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, during the mission, you will be able to attend both general and sectorial events, seminars, workshops, company visits, retail tours, business briefings, and networking events. Even more important will be your individual B2B program, carefully prepared by our office in London. Activities on the program will focus, amongst others, on the EU-UK Trade and Cooperation Agreement, logistics and food and beverages. Also, innovation in clean tech, health and biotech will be highlighted. Official events will include the gift of a garden by Vlam, the Flanders Agriculture Marketing Board, the visit of Van Gogh, the immersive experience produced by the exhibition hub and realized in partnership with Barco. And finally, the visit to the building site of the Riven Hall Integrated Waste Management Facility by Indaver. I am delighted that Jan Jan Bon, Minister President of the Flemish Government and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Culture, ICT and Facility Management will accompany us on this economic mission. This way, he gives his full support to your efforts to start, improve, or consolidate your business activities in the UK. Every company always gets our full attention in order to make the mission a success. That is why our London office has worked very hard in recent months to create an interesting tailor-made program for each of the 170 Flemish participants. In recent weeks and months, you have undoubtedly had several contacts with our team abroad in order to prepare your B2B program. And as you already may know, individual meetings are usually confirmed in the last week or even the last few days before the mission. A week before the mission, you will all receive your individual program by email. The final version of your program will be handed over at the start of the mission on Sunday, the 8th of May. Before, during, but also after the mission, you can count on the support of the local FIT team in London, our colleagues from head office in Brussels, Anke van der Stappen and Ariane van den Heuvel, our Brexit coordinator, Ilke Blicki, and finally, also on our international trade advisors, are always ready to support you with your business development abroad. Finally, I would like to thank my colleagues of the Foreign Trade Agency, AVEX Hub Brussels, Foreign Affairs, and all other partners involved in the preparation of the Belgian Economic Mission to the UK for their support and cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that the Belgian Economic Mission to the UK will be an interesting and successful experience for all of you. And I'm already looking forward to seeing you in London. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Van Stertegem uh, from the FIT, Flanders Investment and Trade.
Thank you. And now I would like to, to pass the floor to Mr. Michel Kempeners, the Chief Operating Officer, COO, International Affairs of AWEX, and the, the, the Agency for Foreign Trade in Wallonia. Uh, Michel, please uh, take the floor. Thank you, President, uh, Cher Didier. Dear Madam, dear Minister, uh, dear Excellencies, dear colleagues, and my dear export of friends. First of all, I would like to apologize the, uh, the, the Pascal Del Cominat, who unfortunately can't attend this briefing with us today as she's currently doing a mission abroad and she asked me to represent her during this briefing. In turn, on behalf of the Wallonia Export and Investment Agency, AWEX, I would like to thank you for all coming this afternoon to attend this briefing and above all for taking part in the trade mission that will take us to the UK in a couple of days. A princely mission that, as you may know why, had to be postponed several times and has therefore obliged us to show enormous patience and abnegation. I would like to thank all my colleagues from FIT, from HUB and from the Foreign Trade Agency and the Federal Affairs to attend uh, and to make everything possible to make this mission possible. A mission that unusually so won't take us to a faraway country, but one to one of our neighbors, the United Kingdom. A country with which Belgium has particularly strong and diversified ties, ties that will be highlighted through a prom promising and also hectic program. A country that will be our ex priority market this year and the flowing one. A country with which we will have to build a renewed and I hope completely revitalized partnership. This is why I'm delighted that there are so many of you here today and that to, our delegation is so full with over 400 participants. A success that shows, according to me, a real renewed desire to conquer or reconquer this important market. As even if there is a in decline in our trade, the United Kingdom is Wallonia's seventh client. As you will see, the suggested program is rich and diversified. This program has been largely designed, at least as far as, as life sciences and clean technologies are concerned, to sectors particularly promising by our economic and commercial office in London, in coordination with the relevant innovation centers, clusters, in order to meet, at best, your own desires and ambitions in the UK. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our innovation centers, clusters, as well as the professional federations for their involvement in the preparation and organization of these programs. In concrete terms, AWEX will offer companies in the life sciences sector to carry out most of their market research in London, Cambridge, and Oxford. In what is a true golden triangle, we have decided to mobilize three important British partners, three leading clusters in the field of health and life sciences, MedCity in London, OBN in Oxford, and One Nucleus in Cambridge. Together with these British partners, we designed a program focused on specific themes, digital technologies in London, access to founding in Cambridge, and regarding Oxford, access to the National Health Service, as well as the post-Brexit challenges for the sector. In Oxford, AWEX will give you the chance to meet around 100 British partners. In Cambridge, around 60 local operators will be mobilized. As we all know, Belgium, and particularly Wallonia, benefits from world-renowned expertise in the life sciences sector, expertise that has been built through strong partnerships and ties between our country and the UK. Like GSK, the main British investor and private employer in Wallonia, and a true global jewel in the design and production of vaccines. But also like UCB, a company dear to the chairman of the board of the Foreign Trade Agency, a company that will be widely promoted during the visit to its brand new site in Windlesham on the, 9th, on the 11th of May. Regarding the clean tech sector, 
we worked with the Cambridge CleanTech to design and build your discovery and networking itinerary. This itinerary will take you to London, Cambridge, Crownfield, and even Malden in Essex on the last day to visit Energy Sprung, a pilot scheme aimed at transforming very energy consuming houses into passive houses, or at least into low energy houses. This project is all the more interesting as building renovation is a key activity in the UK and as there is clearly a market for the know-how and expertise of our companies in this very specific field. In addition, and without being exhaustive, AWIX will organize a tour of the prestigious Cranfield University, which is fully dedicated to third circle education and research, and which is also particularly renowned in your thematics as sustainable construction and means of a means of transport of the future, to name but the main ones. In London, AWIX will organize an activity called Meet the Buyer, during which decision makers belonging to large British groups looking for partners will choose to meet during individual meetings a certain number of Belgian companies likely to meet specific, clearly and identified needs. Trading meetings that will focus on tangible requests and will, therefore, offer real opportunities for contracts and partnerships. Exceptionally, Belgian companies that are not part of our delegation have the possibility of meeting these large British groups in London in person on the 9th of May, the virtually several weeks after our mission, as long as they come forward as soon as possible. Without being exhaustive, I would like to take this opportunity to draw your attention on a few other highlights that should enable uh, you to make the most of your participation. I'm thinking about the TCA in practice that is aimed at answering the questions of Belgian and British exporters whose activity is made more difficult because of new, the new rules coming into force following the approval of the free trade agreement between the UK and the European Union. An activity that will be certainly of interest to players in the logistics sector, as it will be aimed at highlighting the important role played by our country as an EU hub for international logistics. Speaking of which, it seems important to underline here the collaboration and above all the real complementary between the Port of Liège and those of Antwerp and Zeebrugge, a, a complementarity strengthened by the growing activity of Liège Airport. I'm also thinking about two activities organized by Fevia, which should be of interest to our companies in the agri-food sector. These activities are first, a seminar designed to outline the sector in the UK, especially with regards to aspects like uh, linked to e-commerce, a very dynamic distribution channel in the UK. And second, the organization of a retail, retail tour, that is to say a visit to some supermarkets to enable the players in this sector to see how the competition is positioned and to get an idea of the prices charged, the packaging and the labeling used. The companies from other economic sectors will of course have the opportunity to develop their positioning through B2B meetings targeted according, according to their wishes. Individual programs which have been prepared by our teams will be handed out at the beginning of the mission on the evening of your arrival in London. And I would like to thank our teams for their great involvement and especially for the quality of their work. I'm convinced that this, this wait for this mission has not been in vain and that the numerous activities that are offered will enable you to discover or rediscover the tremendous potential of the United Kingdom, a very close country a privileged partner of Belgium, and above all, a market which, despite appearance, remains quite accessible. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Kempenes, for your uh, explanation uh, on what AWEX is prepared for the, for the mission. It was very clear uh, and, and intense. And I would like now to, to give the floor to the, the third region of this wonderful country, 
Brussels region and Mrs. Isabel Laverge, Director of Internationalization Support of Hub Brussels. Uh, Mrs. Laverge, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Malerbe. Your, Royal, your uh, Royal Highness, Excellencies, dear entrepreneurs and dear colleagues, for the last couple of months, we, trade promotion agencies, we have been able to organize economic missions and Belgian pavilions at international trade fairs again, after almost two years of virtual travels and virtual contacts. And we notice that businessmen and women are eager to join us again, and that we can also count on political presence. And so now, finally, very finally, we are embarking on the first Belgian economic mission after the world pandemic, which will be presided over by Her Royal Highness, Princess Astrid. And so in name of her Brussels and the Brussels entrepreneurs, I would like to thank her for her support. Uh, merci beaucoup, madame, vraiment. Um, and I would also like to thank our federal and regional ministers and partners and the ambassadors, His Excellency, Mr. Sherman, and His Excellency, Mr. van der Plum. Thanks to a lot of hard work and a solid collaboration, I think we all succeeded in composing a missions program that Mrs. Loos uh, just presented, and that balances the particularities of the Belgian and regional economic tissues and the commercial challenges and aspirations of us all. So 60 Brussels company representatives are taking part in the Belgian delegation. They are mainly active in what we consider typically Brussels fields of activity, uh, such as legal and financial services, ICT, fashion, food and beverage, consultancy and construction. According to a study we conducted last year, those are also the fields that, we, that were most affected by Brexit. So no coincidence there, I guess. During this Belgian mission, how Brussels will particularly focus on two fields, um, arbitration on the one hand and sustainable construction on the other hand. Why? Well, because, because they are in line with the priorities of the Brussels capital region, um, whose economy is mainly service oriented and in full economic transition. And because uh, those fields offer win-win solutions on the UK market. So to this end, we will organize an arbitration and digitalization seminar in collaboration with CEPANI, which is the Belgian Center for Arbitration and Mediation. This seminar will be moderated by its honorary president, Mr. Dirk de Meulemeester. So when talking about arbitration, the first cities that come to mind are London, Paris, Geneva, New York. Um, however, Brussels has no reason to envy these cities um, and Brussels can be proud of its outstanding expertise based on a large number of internationally renowned arbitrators. Thanks to its strong links with certain foreign markets, its MICE infrastructure and its adaptive, Brussels is in fact an ideal place for arbitration that ensures efficiency, professionalism and neutrality. The ongoing and changing developments in the world of business and the resulting legal challenges further reinforce the fact that arbitration is a fast and efficient way to resolve potential disputes. So in case you didn't know, arbitral awards have the same legal value as judgment of conventional courts. Over the past two years, arbitration and its practice have been affected by regional and worldwide events. The global pandemic and its effect have demonstrated more than ever that, um, uh, that uh, a real necessity is digitalization. So this seminar will highlight the perfect compatibility between arbitration and digitalization and the synergy existing between the two practices that can only lead to a better and a safer legal world. The second Brussels seminar will allow us to present the Belgian expertise in the field of sustainable construction. Our event titled Towards Net Positive Cities is co-organized with the cluster EcoBuild Brussels and the Urban Land Institute, ULI. The climate energy continues, the climate emergency, sorry, continues to reveal or accelerate profound changes that question societies and shake up the certainties of planners, developers, investors, and architects. So we would like to examine how Brussels and London can help each other 
to accelerate the development of net positive businesses, buildings and cities, giving the world more than they are actually taking from it. So this ambitious goal can only be achieved with a coalition of construction and real estate innovation players sharing technological solutions to actively fight for emissions reduction. The Urban Land Institute, which is our partner, as I just mentioned, is the world's oldest and largest network of interdisciplinary real estate and land use experts. So its mission is to shape the future of the built environment for transformative impact in communities around the world. After a brief introduction, the conference will consist of three panels, which will uh, discuss the following topics. First of all, London and Brussels facing the challenges of the 21st century. The second panel will deal with how bio-based materials can both decarbonize buildings and increase their value. And the third panel will treat um, today, renovation is an economic and an environmental necessity. To conclude, I would like to point out that how Brussels is committed to help you transform your business prospects into signed contracts. It's a huge commitment. And uh, so please don't miss uh, the B2B meetings that we scheduled for you and don't hesitate to contact our team. We will have Natalie Stefanovic, our area manager on site, as well as our economic counselor based in London, Munif Kilani. Our CEO, Isabel Gripa, Gripa will also be there. Um, she couldn't be here today, but she will be in London and Oxford. And I myself will be there as well at your disposal. So please, uh, I wish you all a very successful mission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Laverge. Voila, we have had a good overview of what the three regions have prepared for this very important mission to, to UK. And now I would like to, to, to pass the floor to Ambassador Jeroen Koroman. Uh, Mr. Koroman is Director General for Bilateral Affairs at the Federal Public Service for Foreign Affairs, Foreign Trade and Development Corporation. Mr. Uh, the Ambassador, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, Your Royal Highness, uh, Ambassador Shearman, uh, distinguished guests, dear friends, First of all, uh, I would like to apologize for Minister Wilmes, who unfortunately cannot join us today and ask me to address you on, on her behalf. Um, I'm very pleased to be here with you today, and I'm particularly honored by the presence of Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid. The trade mission to the UK is the 16th Belgian economic mission under her leadership, which testifies to, this, to her steadfast support to Belgian companies and her commitment to economic diplomacy. I also would like to thank the Foreign Trade Agency, its director Fabian Lost and her staff for organizing this event, as well as Flanders Investment and Trade, AVEX and Her Brussels, who are partners in this event and who are also organizing not just many uh, events, um, but also all the B2B um, agendas for all the participating companies. And finally, I would like to welcome the ambassador of the United Kingdom to Belgium, uh, His Excellency Martin Shearman, and thank him for the excellent cooperation in the organization of this mission. Dear guests, here we are at last. It has been two years and a half since the last princely economic mission took place. The past two years, COVID-19 greatly disrupted our lives and livelihoods. Travel became, became impossible and large scale events like our economic missions had to be postponed. Under these circumstances, the organization of the mission to the UK certainly wasn't an easy feat, but our persistence has paid off. I want to express my sincere appreciation for the work of everyone who contributed to the preparation of this mission in these difficult circumstances. Belgian economic missions are a success story. The high number of participants is testified to this. But we are living in challenging economic times. First, we had the impact of COVID, and now we are confronting the economic fallout of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It is therefore more important than ever that after a pause of more than two years, we can resume our economic missions, which are a tried and tested instrument of our economic diplomacy. 
And we do this relaunch with one of Belgium's closest friends and allies, our neighbor and one of our largest trade partners, the United Kingdom. Mr. Malerba already mentioned the figures. The UK is our biggest non-EU trade partner with 42 billion euros of exchange of goods between our two countries in 2020 and 19 billion euros of exchanges of services per year. These numbers show a high degree of interdependence embedded in our economic structure. Indeed, our close geographical proximity, our historical trading relationship, and our shared innovative spirit make doing business in each other's backyards just natural. From John Cockerill, the pioneer of the Industrial Revolution, to Zara Rutherford, the Belgo-British citizen who, at age 19, recently became the youngest female pilot to fly solo around the world. There are many examples of our shared history of innovation, entrepreneurship, and talent. And I can also put in this category all of our talented football players who play in the British Premier League. The bottom line is that our businessmen and women find in the UK a dynamic environment with a global outlook. The UK market is also often the first step towards global expansion. This is the case in what are historical or traditional sectors of strengths for our two economies, such as the chemical sector, transport equipment, machines and food and beverage products. But it goes beyond that. The wide range of sectors that will be represented in this economic mission shows that there is an interest across the board and there is potential for much more. I'm thinking of high tech, artificial intelligence, renewable energy, digital health and so on. These sectors constitute the focus of this economic mission. Ladies and gentlemen, if we look closer at our trade numbers, we observe a decline, a small decline, but a decline nonetheless, linked with several major disruptions and challenges of the last few years. The most visible challenge is of course related to the pandemic. Beside its dramatic human costs, it has seriously disrupted our supply chains and our way of working. It caused the decrease of our bilateral exchanges across many sectors, just as it has been the case with most of our trade partners. Supply chains remain affected to this day. However, there are clear signs that these effects are temporary and things are getting back to normal. The pandemic has also underscored the importance of some essential sectors such as, health, such as healthcare, biopharma and life sciences. Indeed, our two countries have played a key part in the development and the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. It is hard to overstate the crucial importance for the global fight against COVID-19 of vaccines such as AstraZeneca's vaccine developed in Britain and partly manufactured in Belgium and the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine produced in Belgium and exported around the world. I believe it is fair to say that our shared commitment to ensure wide availability of the vaccine and to avoid barriers to exports saved many lives. Our two countries' central role in vaccine development goes beyond COVID-19. For example, I want to note the recent breakthrough in the development of a vaccine against malaria by GlaxoSmithKline, a British company long established in Belgium. This is not a result of chance. Both our countries have understood early on the necessity to, to develop an ecosystem around our excellent academic institutions, research institutes, SMEs and large companies. This economic mission will be an occasion to showcase this and to expand this further. The second challenge, of course, is Brexit. Now that Britain is no longer part of the single market, a stable trade framework between the European Union and the UK is of the utmost importance. This framework now exists in the form of the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, the Withdrawal Agreement, and the Northern Ireland Protocol. It took some time to set, but now that we have it, we have to make sure that it's all, uh, that is applied in all its parts and that it works to the benefit of, it, of our citizens and companies. On its side, Belgium is fully committed to strive for a smooth and mutually beneficial relation within the larger EU-UK relationship. This is the spirit in which our two prime ministers recently signed a joint declaration. 
this declaration opens a new chapter in our deeper bilateral cooperation and partnership. It involves regular consultations at all levels of government to share best practices and reinforce practical areas of cooperation, particularly in economic sectors where we share high ambitions, such as energy and biopharma. Ladies and gentlemen, the economic mission not only comes very timely to give a boost to our post-COVID economic recovery efforts, but will also be the first big occasion to demonstrate our shared commitment to this new relationship. Dear guests, the dreadful events of the last few weeks in Ukraine remind us of the importance of partnerships and alliances in today's world. Our two countries, which in history have gone through many challenges together, know this full well. Once again, we stand together. And this brings me to the last point that I want to make. The coming months will remain difficult on the economic side. Our citizens and our companies face rising inflation, high energy prices and supply chain difficulties in several important sectors. This only reinforces our commitment to support businesses in their international projects. This makes our efforts in economic diplomacy even more important. This makes this economic mission even more timely. There are just 20 days left until the start of our mission. I'm looking forward to seeing you in London on May 9th. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador Koroman. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, this is a, a very important opportunity we can't miss. And as you heard, all the actors, in the preparation of the mission have really uh, dedicated a lot of energy to make this mission a real success. Thank you very much. And now, last but not least, I would like to, to give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Martin Shiraman, Ambassador of the United Kingdom to the Kingdom of Belgium. Mr. Shiraman, uh, you have uh, the opportunity to address all the participants to this important mission uh, to start on May 9th, and I would like to give the floor now. Thank you, Mr. Shaman. Thank you very much, Mr. Malheur. Uh, so, so Your, Your Highness, uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a real pleasure uh, to be able to address you as part of this briefing, and I'd like to uh, thank the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, Flanders Investment and Trade, AWEX and Brussels Hub for, uh, uh, for having me uh, as part of the briefing today. Uh, I've also been delighted that we've been able to provide some sm small uh, support for all of the uh, arrangements of the mission. Uh, and I have to say that the, uh, the programme looks very impressive and we are very much looking forward uh, to welcoming you uh, in London, uh, in Oxford and in, uh, in Cambridge. So uh, I, I think uh, the preceding speakers have uh, already taken many of my uh, best lines. Uh, and I was, as I was listening to Ambassador Kuramans, I was thinking that uh, many of the things uh, he said uh, were the things that uh, I had uh, wanted to say. So I'll avoid, I'll try to avoid being too repetitive. But uh, there are some key things that I would just like to underline. The first is that Belgium, is an extremely important country and partner for the United Kingdom. Uh, in the business field, you're our seventh trade partner. Uh, in terms of foreign direct investment in the UK, uh, nearly 7% of the stock of FDI in the UK uh, comes from Belgium. So over 130 billion pounds of uh, investment stock. Uh, the logistical and transport links uh, via the ports of Antwerp and Zeebrugge uh, are also absolutely key for the UK and part of our route uh, to Europe and the wider world, as well as uh, the way uh, Europe and the wider world comes to the UK. So, so as, uh, as close neighbours, we share a very deep uh, economic relationship. Uh, but it, of course, it's much more than that. Uh, we're, we're friends, we're partners, we share values, interests, uh, cultural links as well. 
So there was a lot to celebrate uh, and a lot to build on. It's also a particularly timely visit. Uh, the timing, of course, has been dictated by circumstances uh, and delayed. But I think uh, after Brexit, after hopefully the worst of the COVID pandemic is behind us with uh, our attention now focused on economic recovery. And also against, unfortunately, the background of a challenging uh, economic and uh, security situation uh, in Europe, particularly provoked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, we have a lot to talk about together, a lot to learn from each other, uh, and of course, a lot of business to do. Uh, I will just say a quick word about Brexit. I won't go into lots of detail, but I did just want to underline uh, one uh, strong message from the UK's perspective, which is that for us, the decision to leave the European Union uh, is not, does not mean turning our back on Europe. The United Kingdom's prosperity and security is absolutely uh, rooted uh, in Europe. So even as we look uh, globally, as we've always done, uh, and we look to strengthen our partnerships uh, around the world and find new opportunities around the world, uh, our relationships in Europe uh, are uh, of great importance to us. That goes, of course, for the o United Kingdom's overall relationship with the U European Union, which is on a secure footing, thanks to the trade and cooperation agreements. Uh, but also our individual bilateral relations with the different members of the European Union. Uh, and I think there uh, that the relations with our immediate neighbours uh, across the North Sea uh, uh, matter hugely. Uh, so we are very committed uh, from the perspective of the British government to taking forward uh, our strong links with Belgium, of developing uh, our partnership and our relations uh, right across the field, in the field of business, the economy, energy, uh, but also in other areas and standing together uh, internationally. Uh, and of course, as we are very forcibly reminded at the moment, uh, as allies within NATO who are committed to each other's security. So that's one, one message I wanted to put over today. Uh, a second thing I thought I would just say a word about is uh, the preoccupations that you might uh, come across during your visit to the United Kingdom. So politically, uh, we are uh, in the middle of the current government's term, uh, the government led by Prime Minister Johnson. Uh, the government has a very strong position. It has uh, a large majority. Uh, next elections, probably in uh, 2024, so it has some way to go. So it's uh, a government, and I think probably most people are very much focused on uh, some pressing economic priorities. Uh, First of all, the post-pandemic recovery. The UK economy grew last year by 7.5% and is forecast to grow by 3.8% uh, this year as we build back from the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, that second prediction of 3.8% growth uh, will be affected though by events in Europe uh, and the uh, Ukraine crisis. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, there's growth uh, the recovery has been very much led by domestic demand. Uh, em employment is buoyant. We have 4% unemployment at the moment. Uh, so again, I think that speaks to the, the uh, interest and strength of the UK as a market. Other economic priorities include uh, decarbonisation uh, and climate change. We have very ambitious targets uh, for reducing our carbon emissions by 68% by 2030, 78% by 2035. Uh, and of course, uh, to net zero by 2050. So uh, clean tech, uh, the shift to sustainable energy, which for us includes nuclear, uh, is a very pressing priority. Uh, and th two other things that I'd like to draw your attention to. Uh, one is what in the UK is called levelling up, which means trying to ensure that the benefits of being an open economy uh, are spread around the country, that they don't solely uh, accrue in London and the southeast of England. So although your visit this time is very much focused on London, uh, Cambridge and Oxford, uh, I do hope that if uh, you look longer term at doing business with the UK, you, you will take the time to look at uh, opportunities beyond the, uh, beyond the southeast of England. Uh, and lastly, a big priority for us is 
uh, focusing on further strengthening of our science and technology and R&D base. Uh, clearly for advanced economies such as the UK and Belgium, the future lies in being smart rather than manufacturing at low cost and volume. Uh, so doubling down on our strong science and technology basis uh, is a very high priority. Uh, and we have ambitious targets again for increasing the amount of uh, GDP that goes towards research and development in the UK. The very, the very last thing I, I wanted to say is that I hope you'll feel at home in the UK. I'm sure some of you already know uh, the UK very well, uh, but in many ways you'll be on home turf, uh, the United Kingdom. As I've realised uh, during my time in Belgium, uh, we've been very strongly influenced over the years, over the centuries, by our relationship with Belgium, uh, with the low countries. Uh, and I think you can see that uh, sort of mutual uh, cross-fertilization in the business culture we have. We share a very similar business culture. Things can move very quickly when you're on the same page, but we're also, uh, I think you'll find, and I think you'll find from your UK business partners, very interested in developing long-term uh, and profitable relationships. Uh, so there's lots of business to be done. Uh, I'd like to wish all of you every success uh, during your time in the United Kingdom. Uh, from the perspective of the British Embassy, we can't help you with uh, any of your plans to export more goods or services to the UK. Uh, but I know you're very well supported by, by FIT, by uh, Alex and by Brussels Hub. But if you would like to talk about uh, increasing your investment in the UK or indeed starting to invest in the UK, uh, we would be delighted to hear from you and to explain some of the things that the British government could do to support uh, inward investment and inward investors into the country. So let me close again by thanking you for the chance to speak to you today, uh, by saying I look forward to seeing you uh, in London, uh, and by wishing you, uh, and again by wishing you uh, every success during the economic mission to the UK. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. The Ambassador. I guess uh, this virtual briefing was a real contribution to one of your priorities: huh? decarbonization, reduction, CO two reduction. Uh, so we will continue to be as efficient as possible. We spare even uh, 10 minutes in our uh, schedule. So I guess everybody will be happy to, to go back to their activities. So Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, this concludes the presentation for today. And so we have come to the end of this uh, virtual briefing. Rest me to wish you all good presentation, good preparation in view of a, success, a successful mission in May. I look forward to, to seeing you in, in London and for most of you uh, in the South Station of Brussels on a sunny Sunday. Thank you, uh, all of you, and uh, I wish you a great evening today. Bye-bye. <laughs>